to the Oxford City Stars home ring book for an away game. It's Selfie here, and I'm joined by James Shaw, who is my ex pundit this afternoon. Good afternoon, James. Hello there. Big game this afternoon, James. It's the Bristol Pitbulls that entertain the Oxford City Stars. As a former player, how difficult is it going to be for the City Stars to be away at home? Well, it's a very odd one. Some of the Stars players really will take it in their stride, just, you know, go into the away dressing room, and, you know, it's still a home rink. You're still playing on the same ice. You're still doing the same sort of things. So that's all a good side. You will get some other players who, frankly, will get quite upset because it's not their ice, because it's not their dressing room. There will be other players who will get upset that, you know, this is their home ice, this is their ice rink, this is our barn, so we want to play in our home dressing room. The team don't own the ice rink, as you know, it's owned by the council, but they're allowed to make modifications to the home dressing room, so there'll be certain things in there, certain places to put music, certain places to put their kit. You know, it's your home. A player, you know, I've been playing now since 1985, still play now recreationally, and I still sit in exactly the same spot in the dressing room. Players will have those things. It's that is, that is the big question. Players' positions in the dressing room. Exactly. And you will be put into a position where you're sitting in a, in a basically, it's a, you know, it is a bench that you've not sat on before. I know it sounds bizarre to people who've never been in that situation, but it, it can upset your flow. And what Bristol are going to do, Bristol are going to try and play on that because they know they're here. They know they're here as, as guests. You know, their, their home in Bristol, unfortunately, was lost to housing developers and has since become some flats. And, you know, Bristol are the main team. And there is no other Bristol team. So they're here just like Oxford in this division. Um, and they're here as, as visitors, as, as some of the ground sharing that happening, at, you know, happened at football in the middle of the nineties. Now let's let's look at it in perspective. Let's talk about the merits of this singular game. It is the Elite Two Cup South Division, yes. of which both sides only need a point now to qualify for the next stage. But let's look a little bit far more into the whole situation. Bristol chased Oxford all the way to the title last year. Yes. This year, Bristol have only lost two games. Yes. Uh, albeit to Peterborough and Chelmsford. Maybe Peterborough was a bit of a shock to the system, so they are uh, beatable. Whereas the Oxford City Stars had a magnificent run, tail end of last season and the start of this season. That's but they right. come and start with two or three recently. And one of those being a 6 2 drubbing here against Bristol this season. How big a bearing is this contest got on the rest of the season campaign? Well, the main the main thing is, is we have a, a cup finals weekend here in Oxford for the first time in a long, long time. And the, the, the whole club, players included, are focused on doing that. You know, even though we only need a point from this game, the animosity between the two teams means this isn't going to be a, you know, football scenario with West Germany versus Austria in the 1982 World Cup. You know, it's not going to be one that's played out. It is going to be a hard-fought game. Both teams want to get there. If you lose, it's not the end of the world. However, you do not, Oxford do not want to lose again to Bristol in their barn. They do not want to do that. Now, the return league match is on the 22nd of March next yes. year. But it is a stamp, isn't it? Because the table is very, very tight. Currently, the NHL 2 is very, very tight with Slow at the top in second place. I'm just looking down very quickly. Chelsea with third, Oxford and Bristol are now up into fourth with games in hand. Now we're talking about a cup, we're talking about a cup scenario in just a moment, yep. but it is a bit of a, a marker, isn't it? Oxford want to defend their title that they won so well last year, but it must be very difficult that the side that really are chasing you play in your own barn. We've talked about them having to because of how the developers and everything else, but you know, we're looking down now, Bristol are here, Oxford in their change strip today because they're the way inside. Yep. Everything goes slightly against them. It does, and, it, and, and as I said, some players really won't, won't care, they'll be fine. They can turn up anywhere and not be um, you know, upset by that sort of thing. However, I do know some of the Stars squad will find it a little bit different, and they will get a little bit het up about it, and that may well come out into your opening period of play. A couple of extra hits, a couple of maybe pushes, a couple of little bit of niggles here and there just to sort of show Bristol that, you know, well, this is our place, you know, you may be renting it, but this is our home. How much will that 6-2 defeat recently here affect the City Stars? I can see looking down, it's not a short bench today. They're out there warming up. It's a full kit and caboodle out there for the City Stars. Darren trains the guys very well and prepares them very well. You don't go on a, on a winning streak as you have done by luck. That has been done by excellent coaching and a good playing squad. You know, a few little things went, went against them and that was at the same period as the Stars have become a team that everybody wanted to beat. So what you're doing is you're going to places and other teams are playing above themselves because you are 
Philly big boots, the people who are there to be beaten. And what stars need to do, stars just need to play their game and not being taken into any middles and being able to take control of the game. Where stars have dominated at home, if you look at the stars' record at home, they've absolutely dominated teams. There hasn't been a game which has been particularly close. You know, yes, they have been in, in away fixtures, but at home, Oxford have absolutely dominated. And they need to do that today. They need to grab hold of the game and just, you know, play their way, not get upset about anything. Right, let's talk about the home side tonight which are the Bristol Pitbulls uh, they have three net minders which I think is standard there big player up front from is Jamie Newton gets a lot of uh, a lot of assists scores a lot of goals for them but one player missing from the forward line is actually Phil Dibble brother of the keeper who's uh, got a one match ban for being a bit naughty yes apparently he was a little bit naughty in making gestures to the match officials in his last game so sitting out today apparently it was in the last 30 seconds uh, gesturing at the referee you know as in most other sports you have respect for the referee these guys come out and do it uh, on their own time without the referees we couldn't play so uh, there is a certain level of respect for the referees you have to give but yes he's sitting out because that wasn't given unfortunately now the Hargreaves boys Mike and Richie seem to be like versatile don't fall into defensemen don't fall into uh, any category can play up and down a bit like Alan Green for yep. the City Stars can play everywhere been around the block a bit just how big an influence will they have on this side today uh, they will be a good influence. I mean, the, one of the things with Bristol is why Bristol is very similar to Oxford. It is the senior team. You know, okay, we're in the fourth tier of, of British ice hockey, but it is the main team here. There is not a higher team in the city to take your players away. So in some of the other teams that Oxford are coming against, they're coming against young players, finding their way, and maybe some old veterans who just sort of wilding the way away before they turn out and start playing rec or something like that. However, with Bristol, it is the pinnacle. And Bristol, they're representing their city just the same as the Oxford City Star do, which means you are getting the cream of the crop. Some of Bristol's players have left to join Swindon, some of them have left to join Cardiff, that's fine, players do that to find a better playing setup, better wage, whatever they want to do, you know, the guys aren't paid, but certainly they get some, some boosts for equipment and whatnot, you know, however, there is still that huge drive to play for the prime team in your city, which the Stars have, so both teams have got that, with very, very uh, uh, interesting game ahead of us. Right, one a little bit of added spice is a lot of the Bristol Pitbulls were XA420 players. Let's just move on to the 2013-2014 NIHL League 2 South Cup table. Bristol top it at the moment with six points, but a better goal difference to Oxford, who have six points as well. The A420s have played five, one to go for them. They've only got two points. They are effectively out. And Slough are bottom, three losses from three games and a horrendous goal difference. But... It's one point apiece for these two sides, but one thing you know in this game, it isn't going to be playing for a draw. Yeah, absolutely. I can very rarely think of inst instances of two teams wanting to play out for a point. There's a whole thing about pride. There's the added thing about, you know, they're here in our eye strength, and the players certainly have that one. They want to, you know, put one over on Bristol, certainly for the loss earlier in the field. Well, it's time for us to get ready for the national anthem. The sides will be introduced out on the ice very shortly. Join us for 60 minutes of a fast and furious ice hockey between two sides of Bristol Pitbulls versus the Oxford City Stars. Indeed it does, and a very strong lineup for Oxford to start with. But a quick break straight away, and the first shot may well come in as Bristol drive forward. They are playing as we face the ice from left to right. And Oxford always start with a very strong side. see Greeny out there and Darren Elliott as well. And they'll be looking to get that first goal today. Good work there by Oliver, who takes it back behind his... It's intercepted again, this time breaking forward on the far side. Nick Oliver, captain of the City Stars there. Veteran now with some 185 games with 84 goals in his time. Good lot of assists as well. But good work now by Elliott behind his own net for the City Stars. But they tried to build from the back. That's a good cross Great field. Pass Puck Jackson. there. That is excellent work there. Going forward though. Um, is that an offside? It did look an offside. Is it? With, with ice hockey, you have three distinct zones. There's one which is your defensive zone, then there's the neutral zone, and then there's the attacking zone. You cannot go into the attacking zone before the puck. And what happened there is we had three Oxford players on attack, and one of them was offside. That's why uh, they looked around at each other trying to figure out what happened. And this far as Elliot, far side, plays it inside, comes off the feet, tied it up by Cox. Cox is in the final third, has a shot. What a goal! What a slap goal from Cox! 
An absolute stunning strike just inside the attacking third right of the pitch. Yeah, and right it's on really the rifled right. that in. Keeper Dibble did smell it first. Brought it to the City Stars there. And he really has fired that top corner. A lovely shot from Andy Cox there. He's on the edge of the blue line. Took control of the puck. And it wasn't quite a slap shot. It was more of a snap shot from the edge. He took his time and aimed it perfectly over the goalkeeper's right shoulder. More of a snap than a slap. That's right. There we are. Glad I got you around here at that. But Ghost board again, and City Stars have come out very, very lively. And again, it's tied it up by Bristol, who find themselves at home, but losing by a goal to nil. Cox with that first goal played a nice, nice snap shot. It's almost like a place shot to the top corner. That's right. A slap shot is what is the, one of the big shots which you see on some of the highlight reels, where the player will grab the stick and put it right up over his shoulder and smash it against the puck. Uh, puck can reach. You know, at speeds of upwards of 110, 115 miles an hour. Chance again there, far side, tied it up nicely. Josh Oliver plays it across the face of the pit ball's net. And it's finally been cleared away. Arnold, the defenceman for Oxford, takes it back in behind his goal. Ricky Scaife watches it. Coming short is Flory. And it's played near side again. Not long. And a bit of an untidy take there at the back by Bristol and now take it behind their own goal away to my left hand side. Pick it up and knock it long but uh, good work at the back here. It's a 2-on-1 on here. Danger times for City Stars played in near post. Scape sees it come off his pads and it's around the front and on the far side now it's going to be Josh Oliver to clear his lines and does clear his lines there. That will not be called as an icing according to the man on the far side. The referee's assistant is it? The linesman, yep. One referee and two linesmen in this game. An icing call is where the puck is shot from your defensive zone all the way down the other end of the ice without anybody touching it. Um, there are ways to stop delaying tactics. It's mainly to stop delaying tactics because in the old days, some teams would change their strategies just to fire the, the, the puck down the other end once you've got a result. Very boring games. So that is it interesting it. that uh, you know there's some fairly senior players for the City Stars today and they have come out two or three times already in this first period for uh, the coach to maybe pull out his senior squad just to try and blunt the attacking threat. Yep, Darren is playing a few players. He's not playing the whole of the line available to him. Great little interplay in this side front of the net. Oh, and the keeper's down on it. Good work coming in on the far side there by Nick Oliver, who is the team captain on the ice there. Good work around the net of Bristol. Oxford certainly taking it to Bristol in the first six minutes of this uh, first period. Yeah, we had a little bit of Bristol Bristol pressure right at the begin very beginning, which Oxford have now sort of pushed themselves onto the game, and, uh, it, you know, 1-0 up's great. Face-off just left of the Bristol net. Play forward by Cox. It's into the final third, but played out quite quickly by Bristol. Trying to turn it forward. Good hit down on this near side coming forward two against one he's in the back of that that's a fine fine finish again he passed on the city stars net and he's fired it past escape into the top of the right hand corner of the net again more of a snap more of a placement but a fine fine finish yeah adrian smith there uh, hit coxie on the blue line took possession from coxie that's a rare occurrence i don't think andy cox is going to be too happy about that Smith then played a great pass in to his uh, winger who uh, notched it past Scafie's right hand shoulder so an equaliser for Bristol Smith scoring that goal there he put it into the back of the net a fine strike it is it's a goal apiece now with 11 minutes remaining of the first period and City Stars by the way it's cleared from the City Stars right far side Elliot turns it on first time Green can't get onto it it's picked up the loose puck is picked up on his near side Oliver comes in fires a shot off the keeper's chest it's going to go out and the keeper's lost his hat he's a brave man he's with the dibble third that's cleared quite nicely Pentecost has gone early the two Bristol guys at the back defenceman get themselves in a little bit of a two and eight and it's back now with Cox in behind his own net for the City Stars plays it around the boards chance for it to come out on this near side good speed down on this near side as well great speed by Pentecost who tried to play it down the line just hit the body of the Bristol player now it's played in by Oliver chance in front of the net Pentecost just gets it wide of the goal it's played back around the net of Bristol back across the face of goal can't be turned in it's all happening Josh Oliver was almost there far side now Tidying up will be Bayliss. Good pressure from Oxford, James. Great pressure from Oxford. Superb skill there from Josh Oliver. Played the puck beautifully. Green has come on a far side charge for a shot. That was a slap shot. It's turned away by the keeper, Dibble. But again, he came on the ice almost, almost, you could say, from a viewing perspective. He's come straight on. He's been playing with a pass. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Josh Oliver has some... He's got great ability with his hands. The, the stick handling there behind the net was superb. Flummox the Bristol defenders.
11 minutes remaining of the first period and City Stars take the lead from Cox Smith has equalised and it's the Stars that are breaking forward good work here by Cox breaking down the right fires a shot in keeper takes it and there's going to be uh, a little bit uh, the one person we do know about Mr Cox is that uh, always very fit spends a lot of time sitting down in the zip bin <laughs> yes uh, Cox is my sort of player really he um he doesn't take any fools gladly, shall we put it that way. So uh, the way Andy plays the game is, is full throttle. He used to be uh, forward in his younger days, now sits back on defence. And, uh, yeah, he, he'll be uh, trying to intimidate the Bristol players, just the same as they're now trying to intimidate Oxford. 233 appearances, 49 goals, mate, that 50. That's his half century, according to my records. 128 assists, a very useful man to have in a side. Yeah, superb. He is a very, very... Uh, uh, good Oxford player still of uh, the Stars there we are Bristol trying to get it out there follow through a good nick there going forward oh just wide little flick shot there just about seven or eight yards out and that was turned forward by Josh Oliver who has very good hand speed he's in front of the keeper there and it's gone through keeper drives on it that'll be a face off it's a very very difficult shot for the keeper to take there because it came in from the defenceman on the point that's what we call the edge of the blue line there were three or four players in front of him and the puck wasn't going particularly quickly and that can sometimes take a little bit of a deflection and it confuses the goalkeepers and then sometimes you get the puck just drifting in underneath him but he managed to clear that one play forward again City Star certainly taking it to their host today the Bristol Pistons. bring it forward and it seems to be you know we go on the balance of play here we are into 10 minutes of this first period I've spent most of my time looking away to the goal at my left hand side which means that the City Stars are actually taking it to their host tonight Bristol Stars are controlling the game but you know it's 1-1 it's uh, a very entertaining game of ice hockey that we've got here you certainly couldn't say which way this game is going to go Bristol are looking good on on the break uh, Bristol also have a very strong uh, attribute in their bench coach, which is Dal Morvan, who used to play for the Stars, used to captain the, captain the Stars, involved in you know coaching uh, nationally now. As I was saying about Daryl Morvan, very interesting that Daryl before the game was up watching the Stars, making notes on the warm-up, looking at the netminder. He'll have been feeding in that information to the Bristol players, where to shoot, uh, all that sort of stuff. So uh, showing Bristol a uh, professional outfit. Great crossfield pass there to Green. Green just inside the final third, plays it cross, far side chance. Not wide there by Josh Oliver, not the uh, best of shot. Didn't work the keeper dibble for Bristol, but Stars still clustering around the net of Bristol, but Bristol start ferreting it away. And it was Scott fantastic. Man gets it back, plays it back in behind the net of Oxford City Stars. We're into the final five minutes. Skate tries to tidy up. It's played back in front of goal. A couple of chances and a good, a solid stick work there. But again, it comes forward. Five low in again. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a scrimmage in front of that was that, frantic. Goal. that was frantic. It was. That wasn't great defending from Oxford there. Two Bristol players in front of Matt had a little bit of time. Yeah, we, we, we need to make sure we're on top of their their attackers. Make sure our defenders know where they are and we're. we're with them. Break here though by Bristol, got a chance, good footwork on the far side, tied it up really, really nicely by Clark, who clears his lines, and again he'll have a chance to clear his lines once again, halfway line, far side, sent to Rice, and it's uh, a few people battling for the puck, and all of a sudden it gets just a wee bit messy. That is a particularly bad hit by uh, Ollie Schoen there on James Clark, the referee didn't see it, uh, Ollie Schoen is what, seven foot two seven foot three by the look of him with and skates on he certainly is a very tall lad. very very tall lad his, his shirt comes down to his elbows and he went in to james clark and he led with his stick so basically he used the end of his stick not the curved end of his stick the flat end of his stick the, the sort of butt, butt end of his stick that we call it and he used that and fortunately missed james clark's head and that was a pretty aggressive hit i'm not too impressed with that guy so far. He obviously can't skate because he's just, just fallen over. over. And, uh, There's no real set pattern coming out in this ice hockey cup match. Presently, both sides, it's one apiece. Cox for the City Stars open the scoring and Jordan Smith equalising. Pentecost plays it through. Chance of break on goal. Here it comes. Seven puts it in the back of the What a great bit of work. Straight up keeper down. And the man that's popped it in, Josh Oliver. Quick hands. Just sat the keeper down. He's a big block in front of the goal. He goes left, he goes right, and then tucks it in the back. That is 2 1 Oxford. Fantastic pass to find Josh Oliver. That goal was made right here on the centre line. Oxford player took. Bristol out of the game, played a beautiful pass to Josh. Josh bundled past the Bristol defender who fell over. Josh then deep the keeper. 
great hands, fantastic skill. The goalkeeper was probably mouth open, not knowing what he was doing on the floor. A beautiful goal. You know, you see those, that's absolutely superb handwork and feet work because he's got the keeper who, with padding, you know, sadly I call him a lump, but they are lumps. They've filled the goal and he's drew the keeper. He's gone left, the keeper's fought left, he's gone right and tucked it in. It is a quite exquisite finish. It, it is beautiful. It's one, one, one player on another player, literally metres between them. Who knows what to do? Yeah, as you said, the goalkeepers are huge lumps. They are, they will fill that goal and it, it, it takes some fantastic fantastic skill to be able to get the net minder to make a move to make a move early to try and guess where you're going to play and Josh just just completely threw the goalkeeper there goalkeeper went down to the left Josh went to the right little bit of a shoulder move played the puck in the back of the net beautiful 2-1 Oxford 2-1 Oxford a minute to go in the first period I want to work with the uh, linesman on this near side referee with the arm lands isn't it that's right that's the referee with the orange stripes on his arms so the orange the arm lands if the ice melt he's got can, his wings yeah, he's, got right. he's not got an inflatable little rubber ring no, that's terrific so the strength of the player's skill and intelligence green with a chance now he's into the final third by the he's in the back of the net he picked it up it was a really really poor clearance by Bristol Green picked it up dead centre in the final third just past the point line he's off to his right hand side keeper's beaten from some 10 yards exactly what I was saying the play broke down Bristol had possession they lost it Alan Green came in took control and what he did is he made himself space he didn't panic he made himself space moved along that blue line a little bit more to give himself that time to make the right shot right past the Bristol netminder and we now have a 3-1 hockey game. We have a 3-1 lead coming towards the end and it's really just kicked off in the final minutes of this first period. Very even Stevens. There's a few complaints coming out from the Bristol rear guard as I went forward. It was a flighty puck yep. dropped to the floor by Bristol. They played it out but only found Green. Yep. Green just skated in and done the rest. Yeah that's right. A Bristol player just, just couldn't control the puck when it came to him. It was too quick for him. He got flummoxed. Lost control. Alan Green. Super there's been a couple of uh, complaints made from the Bristol bench we don't know what for they've been uh, talking to the, the referee we've got five seconds left in the game the buzz will go shortly what I'll say about the first period as it comes to an end is you know we had a very equal first part of that period Bristol then tried to instill I would say a little bit of intimidation so as we saw there from Ollie Schoen as we also saw from Grant Richardson the Bristol players were putting in some elbows they were putting in some sticks they were doing things probably they're not really allowed to do and what that has done is the Stars could have either lost it and then gone out and looking for revenge for those really bad hits or they kept going and what they did is they did absolutely right thing ignore Bristol and what they're trying to do just focus on your own game and then we've ended up being 3-1 ahead and what we have to do now is Bristol will be going into that dressing room they'll be getting a drilling down from their bench coach without question and they will come out fired up and the next 10 minutes is going to be very important to Oxford to see what, what happens. So there we are at the end of the first period. Goal scoring as follows. Cox put the City Stars a goal up after Bristol had had one disallowed for somebody being inside the crease. 1-0 Oxford. Brought back for Smith who scored a great goal but late on in the period. First of all Josh Oliver superb second goal for the City Stars and then five seconds before the end of the first period. Alan Green makes it 3-1 but it can all change in ice hockey. Join us for the second period but Currently at Bristol, one Oxford City Stars. The second period decides just coming out onto the ice in the second period. The Bristol Pitbulls, who are trailing by three goals to one against the Oxford City Stars here in this uh, NIHL 2 South Divisional Cup match. 
Both sides are beaten in this uh, division. Only four sides in the division. Both of them only need one point to go through, but it's 3-1. One other thing I was interested, do you think that Daryl Morfan would have picked up of something that I saw very early? That I won't say the A side, because I think all the players are very good for the Oxford City Stars, but a very strong side came on the ice quite a bit in the first 20. Yeah, he'll be um, rotating his lines to make sure they match Oxford's strongest lines. Because there could be fatigue coming into play at the back end of the 60 minutes on the yeah, ice. Yeah, there could well be. The game does flow like that, where you, if you're playing your, you know, uh, you basically will have three lines of five. So five players on the ice at any one time. They can interchange, as you say, and you'll have a strong line, which may well play 60% of the time compared to the other two. Bristol in possession of the puck, ran by their own net, away to my right-hand side, coming down on the near side, Young doesn't take it clearly, Clarkson with a strong challenge, and the puck breaks loose, Bristol trying to break in on the net, cleared there by Clark, down the ice off the backboards behind the goal, Dibble the netminder, whoa, that's a big take out there behind the net, but uh, nothing doing. Up we get, Josh Oliver coming off, he's uh, decided enough's enough, Bailey's still in the sim bin, Puck played in behind the net, Scape goes on it, face off just outside the Oxford City Stars net, who lead by three goals to one here in this NIHL 2 South Cup match, it's a very interesting one, yardstick to be here, because I have said many times in the commentary so far, Bristol only beaten twice in the Cup, and the league this season, away at Chelmsford and Peterborough. That's right, they're a very strong team. We've got a, a broken stick there for the netminder who swapped his stick. Uh, two minutes as well. D down two minutes. John Bayliss will be on in 27 seconds, so the power play will flip-flop, so to speak. Yeah. Face off just in front of the net of Bristol. Pentecost battled with it. Oliver got it away. Comes out of Darren Elliott, just inside the final third. Plays it down the line, finds Green. Green in the corner, if there is such a thing on a rounder rig. Plays it back in behind goal again. Pentecost picks up the loose puck, plays it across. A little inadvertent heel there. And the top man, Ollie Sean, who's uh, seven foot three and a bit with his skates on, tries to hook surely uh, Darren Elliott, who plays it across to this right-hand side. Oliver now comes forward with the puck, finds the man on centre ice, Green. Green cuts in from the left, comes back on the right-hand side. It's Oliver now driving into the final third. Fires a slap shot, powered away by the keeper, Dibble, and tied it up by the... Bristol rear guard, but they've lost that again. Robbed down on that far side. We now have Stars on numerical advantage. The Stars are on the power play, as you see. The Stars will be wheeling the puck round the Bristol uh, defenders who are forming that box. Uh, good slap shots gone high away on the far side. And that puck was deflected, has hit the roof, and play will be stopped. Um, as any time the puck hits the roof, the uh, game has to stop. You're a popular chap, aren't you? You know, everybody here. <laughs> in fairness, down here at Bristol in Oxford. Bristol in Oxford, yes. I didn't like going to Bristol, but I quite like going to Bristol now. But then it's in Oxford. Oh, I'm confused. There we are. Next goal could be crucial for the spirit of Bristol. If it goes against them 4-1 down midway through the period, it could be a, a psychological advantage towards the City Stars. Absolutely. A 4-1 deficit. Although it's not impossible, it will be playing in the back of their minds. And there was a superb hit by Josh Flory in that period of play and the Bristol defender has taken particular exception for what was a perfectly legal check uh, making him look silly uh, sprawled all over the ice. Puck played around the boards, comes near side, it's now breaking down the right, Cox goes through, nice little nutmeg, loose one goes to Green, Green in front of goal, plays it far side, City Stars holding up, there's players sprawling on the ice for Bristol, they'll set themselves again, turn forward, it is now Pentecost plays it back across, Cox near side, scores with a snapshot earlier on, ricochet away from the net of Bristol, a lot of pressure coming here from the Stars, back out in front, fired in by the keepers off the Keepers moved the goal, or has that, that just been inadvertent? Uh, no, Craig Plank. I'm sorry, the keeper has purposely moved the net while the shot was being taken. He used his bottom to push the goal off the net. Quite a that, that was, uh, yeah, that was as blatant as you can get. I wouldn't have been guilty as a defender. If I got called for a penalty for that, I would go straight to the box. Quite a chat going on between the, the linesman and the referees down there. Yeah, I wonder if the officials were, unfortunately, I don't know if the officials were the same as during the game here when Bristol beat the Stars. And Yeah, Dibble shifted more nets than a fisherman that night. I was absolutely... Okay. Clark has been robbed, driving forward now. Richardson fires a shot, Scaife powers it away, cleared by the rear guard there of Stars. And they'll pick the loose puck up. It's Smith driving forward now, one against one. He's around the outside of him, just doesn't take the puck with him. And Bristol tidy up in behind their own net. 
trying to come away again. Both sides back up to full strength now. Both the uh, players in the bin are back out. It's full sides and uh, oh Clark is taking a big hit on the far side but it's tied it up again coming forward a chance now Sakura is on the ice oh two against two green comes on to pick it up what's going on Sakura's almost lost his heart there sat there wondering what he's just walked into he walked into a wall yeah. and Bristol pit bulls what do you got James is that of... is that was a pretty dangerous hit by uh, Sean, Mr. Sean Sean. it's not on yes. Sean this time it's uh, I believe that is number 15, which are this uh, Williams on my... Uh, yeah, it could well be Williams. It's got Williams there. on their board, but it's shot on the back of his shirt. Maybe he's shot at the wrong time for Williams. Yeah, maybe, but that was a particularly... We've got two off. We've got Clark as well. Clark and Sean are off. Yes, they've called James Clark. We've got two penalties for Bristol. We've got one for Oxford. Uh, the flow of the play there was Sean has gone in on uh, Oxford player with a quite ridiculous... And to be to be fair, dangerous check. Uh, Oxford player is back to the play. The hit was uh, given um, to his back. The Oxford player then flew face forward into the board. And I have seen, uh, you know, unfortunate instances where players have become paralysed, where their face and their neck have hit the boards first. It's a very dangerous hit. Now this um, is James Clark, who is a local lad to come back. He's played at a higher level. 36-year-old James Clark, who took a fairly hefty whack and tumble face forward into the boards. Veteran of some uh, 169, 170 games. Yeah. 20 goals. Good defenseman, but he's going to feel that as a 36-year-old, surely. Yeah, and he's come out here. He's, there is a bit of a to-do in the penalty box as James Clark is asking uh, the Bristol player what was going on. As we know, it was a quite diabolical hit. There's a lot of aggravation. I think the Bristol players is certainly he's marked. He's coming back out. There's certain, there's a two argument between the two players. I think we're going to see one of the Bristol players be ejected. I'll say that now. My prediction is that guy will not be finishing the game. His attitude stinks, um, and he will he will lose his tempo. He doesn't look like a well-rounded uh, hockey player to me. Also still trying to press. Smith trying to get in there, but it's back in center ice. It's hooked long and high. Scape will just palm it away. It's picked up there by Arnold behind the net but he's been robbed he's managed to get it back he'll play the puck down the boards Broughton gets a nice touch as well skates away from his man but just shows too much of it and Bristol tidy up Newton will try and put Arnold under pressure Arnold turns it down the line of Broughton Broughton gets into uh, Asprey right on the centre ice here against his near side quite a bit of indiscriminate play there Again, played back towards this near side. Both sides back. Straight into the game is Clark. Broughton breaks forward. He's got a chance. So finds his shot. And keeper smothers. Dibble smothers there. But uh, again, it fell nicely. Clark came straight on and into the play from the bin. Fantastic play by Clark. He straight onto the ice. Took control. Played it to Sammy. Sammy shot. A great chance, Oxford. But he's managed to get it across behind the net. And it's tied it up and away by Oxford. And uh, as slap shots go, that was pretty pathetic. That was quite a weak shot. Uh, <laughs> He really didn't get anything of it. Did yeah, it? Like Chris Moore, a defenceman. Just the puck came to him a little bit wrong. Maybe he had a bit more time than he knew. No, that um, was me on the first tee, <laughs> topping a, a, a try. He did slice it. He didn't hit it cleanly. And it, it, it's just taken away with not much power and, and dribbled into Scafford. Remains in there. Good pace by Pentecost to go inside his man. Chance in front of the hall. Good save, but a keeper nibble. In goes Josh Oliver. And in the end, it's cleared. Oh, penalty what have we shots. Got? We've got a penalty shot. Oxford have been given a penalty shot, so... We have got exactly there. the referee what happened is there, I thought it was taken by Dibble. There's a player down by the near post. Has somebody smothered it uh, illegally? It is the defender. As the shot was taken, the defender has slid in and has sit, well, basically lay down on top of the puck. And that has been given a penalty shot. So all players must now leave the ice except for the player taking the shot. That will go from the centre circle, unlike football or soccer where you take the kick from the penalty spot and it's just one kick. Is it the person that uh, had the shot originally? Uh, no, can you, can, you, you can choose, you can nominate. So here, I, well, James Pentecost is, is going to be doing it. So, uh, thought maybe Josh Oliver might have got that with his quick hands because surely this is about drawing the keeper. So this is all about drawing the keeper, but uh, so you get to skate from the centre circle, allow you to play a little bit of skill. Pentecost comes in, he takes it wide, he plays it, quick stick hands, oh, and it's saved. Uh, it's saved. Uh, I would have nominated, of what do I know, Josh Oliver, who's still already done the keeper with a left and right. Some leagues, it is down to the player who's been fouled that has to take it, I'll be honest. And I'm not sure whether those are the rules. I so think that could well have been the rules here. I think there, so. I, I think, think that's what's happened, because I, I too would put in, you Josh. Know, would put in Josh. Because yeah. Josh is going to score 
Although James, James comes here with a good pedigree from Peterborough. Yeah, excellent so, player. Uh, you know, uh, there's, there's no... No, there isn't. It, it's, uh, you know, he got the shot on target. The goalkeeper saved it. It wasn't uh, wasn't a horrendous shot by any means. And uh, Oxford doing their best there. Pentecost doing well. He'll want to get back on the score sheet. He's got a chance in front of goal. Now finds it. Take him on the keeper. Rebound comes out. Tied it up again by the Bristol rear guard. Ollie Shon now. One on one against Bayliss. Bayliss goes there. Good work there by Bayliss. For it. Ties it up as well. And in the end, it's good work. And coming away, there's a three against two here for City Stars. Now to break it forward. Flory has a chance. Flicks it in off the helmet of the defender. And it's now going to be a straight race back. Cox will get there first. Turns it down of the line. Important cup match. The final stage will be held here in Oxford for the first time since 1985. Uh, Oxford want to be part of it and they won uh, the division that these two protagonists do sit in last year as Bristol chased Oxford all the way Green on centre right turns away from one he's got away from two but he's getting a little hassle goes wide plays it across the face Darren Elliott what a save by Dibble he came in there it was a superb save the referee is blamed for an infringement, but uh, you've got to give Dibble some credit there. It was flying to his left, and he's powered the puck away. It was a great save, absolutely great save from Bristol. A superb bit of skill from Alan Green, taking control of the puck. Stars possessions, played inside. Josh Oliver tries to turn it around too, but it just goes wide to the Bristol net. And in the end, uh, good work on the far side by Josh Flory. Picked up there by Josh Oliver. Scamps away for one. Chance for shot. What a good save again by Dibble. But great stick work, hand and speed. Fantastic there by Josh Oliver. Great ice hockey. Absolutely fantastic. Superb skill there from uh, Josh Oliver, taking that from, from Oxford defender Josh Flory, who'd taken possession. There's loads of Josh's. Josh Superb bit of skill and a brilliant save at the end by the Bristol netminder. By Clark, but he has been robbed. With Sandra Ice, he wins it back, plays it long. Hargreaves brings it down with a big paw. Smith on the attack for Stars, coming down left hand side, plays it. Sakura shoots wide of Dibble's net. City Stars eking it on again, Charles coming in there, Whoa, just wide there by Broughton this time, side net him, puck is still in play, and Stars eking pressure again, played in, comes out, fires in by Clark, deflected wide, Sakura now, trying to get the puck behind the net of the Bristol Pitbulls, comes away with it well, turns it back in behind a goal, Smith now, City Stars in possession, far side. He's just caught on the boards and Bristol will now play the puck away. Turn it back in behind their net. They trail by three goals to one. We're in the final four minutes of this second period and it's been a very even contest as most of the first period it was. It was only the last few minutes where Oxford stretched their legs and got into the league. Can you see the next goal being really pivotal? Absolutely. 3-1. This is still a very close hockey game. You could score a couple of goals easily in a couple of minutes. So this is still on uh, knife point. What a shot there from uh, Greeny. That nice was quite some distance. <laughs> Knife edge, skate edge. Doesn't really matter. It's on the edge because uh, the next goal goes the way of the Bristol Pitbulls. They are right in it. And we all know what it's like when you're holding a slender advantage. Two goals is actually worth some one. Absolutely. But I don't. I just don't think Bristol have got the stamina. Looking at the way they're playing, I don't think they've got the speed. Maybe Christmas is catching up with them. Maybe it's all the travel that they have to come to Oxford to train and to, to play. Um, they just don't look to be as fit as the Stars. Well, they won 6-2 earlier on in the season, and they were under an enormous amount of pressure that day. But uh, a lot of professionalism, a lot of good work by Bristol. As City Stars build again. As the time ticks down, Jeff Sakura gets himself in there. Jeff Sakura coaches just about everybody at the, this club, from youth all the way through, doing his job. And that is the end of the second period. No goal scored in the second period. It's still Bristol 1, Oxford City Stars 3. Balance of play in the second period. Very even, James. Very even. I would say Stars definitely nudged it. They look faster. They're not playing... As aggressively at Bristol, I think Bristol have possibly lost it in terms of their heads. Um, there's a lot of work for Mr. Morvan to do with his team. And he's standing there with his arm folded, having a chat with some of the players. I'm sure he'll be going in, giving them words of encouragement, pepping them up. And the same thing Darren Elliott will be doing, just making sure the Stars don't lose the lead for the next period. So, one period to go. City Stars are leading by three goals to one at this away cup match. Let's see if they can take that final 20 minutes in their stride. They join us now for the third period. Oxford City Stars away at home. And if it stays that way, James, Oxford will have definitely have qualified. Yep, which is what we needed to do at the beginning of the season. Um, we're going to work with Oxford City Council. Um, obviously, if we get the result today, 
we're going to work with Oxford City Council to make sure that weekend at the back end of the season is well publicised and we get a lot of people visiting the city for that weekend. It's going to be a huge occasion with a uh, finals event being held place in, in Oxford and hopefully uh, Oxford sports fans will rise and, and come in and you know fill the rink. Uh, it, it's not uh, it's not something that Oxford get the money from. It is an EIHA English Ice Hockey Association competition, so they will get the gate money and whatever else. But we certainly get benefits and bonuses from that. So we're looking forward to keeping this the score as it is and to get us through to that finals weekend. This and indeed Chelmsford Oxford had had that fantastic winning run, which came to an end uh, this season at Lee Valley. Yes, a chance goes in. It's a great goal. Out of nowhere, out of absolutely nowhere, Dan Alley has picked up the puck behind the Bristol Pitbull's net and skated round almost, almost as easy as you like, and he's just lifted it over the shoulder of the keeper Dibble into the roof of the net, but he didn't seem to be challenged. Lovely goal, uh, Dan took possession from behind the net, skated out in front of the net to the goalkeeper's left, and has turned around and placed a shot top left-hand corner. Superb finish. Uh, shows his experience there as being able to think about the right play to do. Uh, Bristol goalie looks, you know, particularly unhappy with what's gone on. 4-1 hockey game. Things are going Oxford's way. You've got to say, though, he's picked the puck up. And it's almost like, um, if I can use an analogy in football, the defenders haven't shut him down. Yeah, they've, they've, it's down to using the experience there. You know, a, a defender may not possibly... There we go. There we go. Green has made it by. The referee's going to no, roll it out, though. No. He's going to rule it out. I don't know why he's ruled it out, but uh, that hit, though, from Darren Elliott is possibly... You heard by the commentary. I was just setting the scene. There didn't seem to be any danger. You're quite right. You're calling in. Excellent. That's why you're here. The analysis is there. He's picked it up and done the business. Yeah, he, he knew what he was going to do, and it's that sort of speed of thought. As you think about it, everything goes into slow motion when you get into those positions. It's that sort of really tight, very quick things. And he's just slowed everything down and placed a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. 4-1. Face off, final third. It's played out from behind the net. Halfway line. It is Pentecost circling in field. Over the halfway line he goes. Fires a long point down. That'll be picked up by Josh. Oh, the first time shot off the box. Oh, by the keeper Dibble. Pentecost tries to put the rebound in. Back out in front of goal. Coming in there. It is flying with a shot. Keeper spills and then Falls on the rebound, and we have the argy bargy, Mr. Flurry, Jake Flurry, is involved in a little bit of uh, helmet to helmet confrontation. Yeah, case. Jake continued going as quite rightly you should. He's a defender; he doesn't go out there very often, so he obviously had a little bit of a nosebleed, a little bit of a panic, wanting to have a shot. Kept uh, digging away at the netminder, and uh, the Bristol defenders took exception to that and gave him a bit of a cover. It looked like it, but. Um, I just got to mention as well, I went to speak to some of the Bristol fans during the intermission of this final period and uh, we discussed with them the jerseys, which are in fact on behalf of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So Bristol are wearing these jerseys for three games over the, the festive period, uh, dressed as elves. Uh, you know, they're described as so bad they're good, and I think we agree with that. Yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. The only thing I will say about the jerseys is, as much as they're festive, as much as they are raising money for charity, this is a very, uh, very, very strong physical type of sport, and it does take the edge off a pit bull when it's dressed with cat and striped socks and swirly buttons and, and a red bow tie. And a red bow tie, yeah. And also, there is, I mean, the, the serious side of it for them is the colour clash. and. You know, just thinking when you've got your head down, you're digging the puck away from your feet, you're not looking up, you're going to see someone in green around you, an Oxford's kit being that, you know, black with dark green stars across it, it will confuse you for a second. And I wonder if maybe the referees should have made Oxford wear their home kit, you know, which is uh, predominantly white. So, uh, well, it wouldn't have yeah, and that, that play there by Sam Arnold, understated defensive brilliance. You know, no one will, you know, particularly notice that. But Bristol were attacking the Oxford net. A pass was played across, across and a beautiful piece of defensive work by Sam Arnold. Sort of opened a blade up, just, just took just it away from the rushing forward. Take the puck away, close the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, 
the play situation down. Oxford win the puck back. It's superb. You know, that is great defensive work by Sam Arnold there. Face off, jigs up the puck and starts pushing the goal. Oh, Green with a chance to turn centre goal. He's in on goal here, Green. Can he slip it in? Oh, good save by the keeper. Comes out. Green is still in with a chance. Bristol, though, smuggle the puck away. The goal and a chance, only a touch there from a Bristol forward. Could have made that 4-2. But in the end, there's a penalty given there by Coxie. I believe he's just... Gonna go straight in and sit down. He knows his place. That was, a, that was a, <laughs> a very professional foul by Andy Cox. There did what he needed to do. Uh, what was, did it well. He uh, uh, took his two minutes on the chin. What was interesting with that period of play is you had shown trying to take out Greeny and he pushed himself forward and what he did is he exposed a huge way, way of space behind him because he went that extra step because all he wanted to do was hit Alan Green and Alan Green managed to move himself away and just play a beautiful bit of skill on the edge of the blue line turn himself backwards inside out and then get that shot on there just how an hour fast, man down. how fast is that young man Josh Oliver across the ice he's got some serious pace there but not only has he got great hands as we said earlier in the game he is a superb natural skater absolutely fantastic ability uh, some suggest he was born with ice skates but he is a, he, you know fantastic just got funny player. shaped feet <laughs> anyway it's Bristol over the James he has a shot comes in again another shot deflection keepers spin it away oh it's all over the place in they go bodies are kipped uh, the puck comes in and then it sort of rolls along the goalkeeper's arm rolls along the goalkeeeper's blocker the goalkeeper's flailing all over the place to get hold of it uh, that was after a good break by Bristol now. I think it was Adam Young with a particularly uh, impressive piece of skill on the wing going past Oxford but um, you're quite right about the number 33 little uh, Sam Arnold he just does his job doesn't he impressive he's an impressive hockey player yeah absolutely does his job very Only solid 19 years of age really this is uh, his most solid season he's only had about 46 appearances 46 47 appearances for the City Stars of, of which you know really made it up to the first team last year yep and he's, he's not big in stature and for a defenseman that says something usually they're great big lumps but uh, he's uh, very good solid doesn't seem to uh, you know have any fear out there Scape clears his line Smith won't get there Bristol will try and drive forward they're in behind the goal cross the face of goal good work by James Clark the veteran with a tash underneath that helmet in front of his own netminder Scape and uh, again, Sam Arnold picks up the loose puck, puts it to Greeny. Greeny down his left hand side, skates around his man, gets that chance in on goal. Hodges, near post, flicked in! Jacob. On the back, and that's a fantastic finish there by Jacob Smith, but great work by Greeny! Great work by Greeny, and going back to Sam Arnold, took the puck on the face off circle just in front of the blue line, our home blue line and played a lovely pass to Alan Green. Gave Alan Green the impetus to get onto the puck, to move onto the puck, go past Bristol defender. He weaved round the outside of the face-off circle and has played a lovely pass across the net for Jacob Smith to notch Oxford's fifth. Absolutely fantastic work, you say. Arnold finding Green. Green with the agility and the nimbleness. Fleet of skate to get around against the boards is mad. And then have the, uh, you know, the decision-making. We talk about decision-making in any sport to fire it low across the face of goal and Jacobs just tapped it in at the back post it sounds easy but it's a good well worked goal yeah great thing. it is it is it's one of my favorite types of goal is when you know you have that very close in pass with a one-time shot it just shows great teamwork and uh, a number of Oxford players have been on top of their game today it's really good to see in the previous game as I said they lost 6-2 against Bristol they missed a host of chances I yep. don't see too many chances going begging today most of them you think of the uh, stick work by Josh Oliver for the second the work the placement for Green Darren Elliott's placement and then Smith there's been some really fine goals they've taken every chance afforded to them today yeah there's not been many missed you know let's you know, ignoring James Pentecost penalty, uh, oh, penalty forgot, shot on this. Forgot Cocker's <laughs> great uh, snapshot and placement for the first. Yeah, superb. And I think there's also been really solid defensive work as well. I've been very impressed with, with Coxie. And as I've, I've mentioned, the Flores and, and uh, Sam Arnold have been particularly good today. Almost uh, a little bit of a break. They haven't played for a few days. And uh, we do talk, uh, there is a like a rumour mill regarding 
injuries in ice hockey. Nobody ever discloses injuries in ice hockey. And at the end of the season, some people may well, you know, come to the fore and say, well, I've played the whole game with, a uh, whole season with knee ligament damage. You don't discuss it, but they will have had a few days to sort of rest and recuperate as the festive approach, uh, period approached. Absolutely. You've got, you've got some uh, niggles, which you, you know, sore elbow, short, sore, uh, sore. <laughs> yeah, elbow's sore enough. Shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a number of things that will uh, that will niggle you. Clears of the park. Just got to say a big, a big uh, hurrah to the Oxford City Stars fans on the far side, who yeah. are making themselves heard. Yeah, good away support from Oxford. I mean, okay, it's at home, but Oxford, we don't do. I suppose the City Stars don't do a great deal to promote the sort of Bristol home games. Uh, not as much as we do our own home games. So uh, it's a good little turnout for uh, Oxford. Sammy got Borton's gone off for two minutes. Sammy Borton has gone off to, for, for two minutes. What happened there is basically uh, called for, for playing him back. I believe that uh, one of your uh, Stars Day's roles was to... Uh be the enforcer in the middle of the park sometimes would that be correct <laughs> to uh, I would, the player I wouldn't say that it was one of my first instructions put it that way was when I was a youngster playing for the Stars away in Birmingham was uh, one of the things I was instructed to do by the coach was go on and get on and hit someone which I did although I didn't think he meant punching but uh, <laughs> there we go there we go the life and times of James the enforcer shell who's by pundit today knows ice hockey inside out back to front and upside down he often played it upside down apparently as well Bristol though trail by five goals to one against the rampant City Stars who have put in a very very professional performance here this evening in this NIHL 2 South Cup match and we'll see them qualify for the finals they only needed a point today Slay were the only side that could get six it means that Bristol's uh, qualification is not assured as of yet but what feels there will be a chance in this four-team group for them to sort it out. Good clearance there. By there is still a power play. 41 seconds to go on the power play. City stars a man up as in the box is for him. What a slap shot that was there from Cox. And again, the smallest man I've ever seen in ice hockey. Has decided to uh, start something else. I didn't see too much wrong with what happened there in front of the net. No, but as I, as I mentioned before, the, the netminder is a defenseman. It is your job to protect him. And if anybody goes in on that that netminder, you will you will have a disagreement with him, and that's what's happened there. Well, that defenseman certainly wasn't happy, but uh, I don't know which one he was. Could have been grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Not very big, is he? He isn't. No. Um, let's have a look. Clark, there is. Uh, Drifted, you will never see because half his shirt's disappeared because he's only got he's got those big trousers on. And maybe, shirt, it's a, maybe he's a real Christmas elf. I don't know, he needs to help himself down there as well. But uh, <laughs> currently, 12 seconds to go of the power play, and a bit of and coming away with it now. The fleet foot, oh, a cross field pass there to Josh Oliver, doesn't make it. Josh Oliver picks it up now. A little bit of interplay on the not far side, Nick Oliver. Tries to get it forward but loses out and a loose puck comes through. Oh, good skill there. It's a one on one here. Great save by Scape. Cox does well to get away with the puck on the far side. Bristol driving forward again. Uh, strong work there by John Oliver, who doesn't shows his defensive capabilities there as his attacking hands have been superb tonight. Great bit of skill actually from Adrian Smith. I know why he uh, was a little bit critical of his speed earlier in the broadcast, but he good bit of skill to go past Oxford player. And again, we had the. Uh, the large shown uh, throwing himself around somewhat like a windmill into the play. But by the Oxford rear guard, Darren Elliott skates now in down this left hand side. He's dragging his man across, right across the face of goal, going in very quickly. There it was Zach Dolphin, hasn't seen a lot of ice time today, hasn't had a shot. Keepers, Bills, chance again, loose puck, keepers on it now. But Zach Dolphin coming out as we thought would happen. The youngster is making his way yep. into the side, getting a bit of ice time. Yeah, not, he's not allowed a, had a lot of ice time during the game. That can be frustrating for a younger a, a youngster. You think you've got the ability, you're wondering why you're not on, because you want to be able to do a job. And that's good, good from the coach to give him a little bit of a run out. And uh, he had an opportunity there, good opportunity, but great work from Down. Great pass across the uh, the goal mail. Puck down this near side. Elliot breaks away. It wasn't so good at all. Give me the right man in the moment. Darren Elliott fires it, oh, good save by the keeper again, Dibble, who is, for me is uh, put in a shift, although he's been beaten some uh, five times, that was Joe Oliver, two and one it is this time, not one and two, 
It was Joe Oliver that done good defensive work. Going back now, there's Joe Oliver again. I'll get his name right this time. He's tried to clear his lines. It hasn't got there. Across the face of goal, it goes again. Cox with a deflection for the puck away from the Oxford net. Darren Elliott catches, drops, and inside his own defensive third now plays it from right to left. Inside, Cox back to Elliott. Elliott now down the line, chance for someone to run onto it's Josh Oliver, you were going to say well as the game has got 2 minutes 31 seconds left, there's practically no chance for Bristol to, to take anything from the game now so it's going to be interesting to see what they do, are they out there to going to try and cause a little bit of bother a little bit of niggle, there's been things ongoing during the game, is that going to be uh, you know, um, and ended up with any result of any fighting or anything, we'll wait and see, I think Oxford are far more disciplined than that but we'll see what Bristol's game plan is and it's flicked around the net blindly, and that was a bad, bad flick there, a blind flick there by Josh Flory in behind it. He is a forward by nature, but a long ball over the top. Josh Flory in the chance. He's got the key to beat. Keeper's there. Goes wide. Good save there by the keeper. Dibble just forced him to the left of the goal. And the puck is still just in the possession of the City Stars. City Stars now driving uh, Bristol back, but Bristol come forward with Ollie Sean with a distance shot. And the puck out. Now will be a face-off now with just under six seconds to go. I suppose really now it's for me to ask you to wrap up what has been, I should imagine, a 5-1 victory for the City Stars away here at Bristol Pitbulls. You know, your whole thoughts on the performance tonight, James? I think there's been a lot of Oxford players on, on their game today. Um, you know, Josh Oliver to start with was absolutely fantastic. I think Alan Green's had a great game. Cox has had a great game. You know, Sam Arnold, as we mentioned... Um, and you know, can't take away from from James Scaife in net as well. You know, um, a five-one win. You know, only landed one goal. It's, it's a great performance from the City Stars. Um, a very, very professional um, way they've taken the game. And uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Big, big, you know, in the cup final weekend now, we can start preparing for that in a big way. The players look very, very happy. And uh, now over to the quite big league game. Yeah, the next home game. We'll get on to that in just a second. I just want to wrap up. The players with the big numbers and appearances and goals and assists yes. that come to the table today. You've just mentioned one, Josh Oliver, Andy Cox, you know, Sam Broughton, James Clark, you know, Alan Green. These are all people of quite a welter of experience. They brought their A game there today. Absolutely. Didn't they? And they needed to. And the coach Darren Elliott as well. I mean that that's a fantastic result for the team. Um, to come out, play that way, dominate Bristol, who, you know, seem to be Oxford's main rivals uh, at the moment. So that's a, a really good result, really good uh, play. The experienced players brought their A game, but also those youngsters, when they were when they were on, superb. You know, yeah, Sam Arnold, on, Sam, it, you know, know, they, just brilliant. They came on, they did their jobs quietly and efficiently. The story of the tape was Cox with a snapshot just inside the point line put Oxford a goal up. That was equalised by uh, Smith, who made it 1-1, but from there on, it, it was all about, you know, if Cox's was a good goal, we then saw Josh Oliver with terrific stick work. Baines left, goes right, tucks it in the back of the net for 2-1. Alan Green then picks up on a defensive error, pops it in from some seven or eight yards, past the keeper at the top of the net, which is always a different place to get it. And at the top of the third, at the start of the third period, Darren Elliott, the captain, the coach, well, no, he's not the captain, he's the coach, comes around from the back of the net and makes it look oh so simple as he just flicks it past the keeper to make it 4-1. That really was the straw that broke the camel's back and it was wrapped up with good work by Sam Arnold fighting Green, Green down the flank, across to the back post, as I would say, and in comes Jacob Smith for 5-1. It was that convincing in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, spectacular game. It was a great, great performance from the Stars. You know, you're going to take a lot of credit from that and... Um, yeah, I can't think of, of many negatives. You know, Pentecost really impresses me. He's a very good signing by uh, Darren Elliott, replacing Mike Lewis, uh, coached and, and you know after playing Germany, which uh, you know you can't can't criticise a player for going to play in a, a professional league. So it just shows the sort of uh, talent and and the, the team spirit here. Um, you know, very good. We've got Joe Edwards as well, who's not been playing. Mason Wilde not been playing. They're all in, you know involved, very keen to see what's going on and and. Uh, Support their support their teammates. It is time for the Man of Match awards as the two sides come through. It is Alan Green that gets in for the Oxford City Stars.
A fine third goal for Oxford City Stars for good all-round play, but there was a number of man of the match performances tonight. Yeah, yeah definitely. It was a very good performance from Greeny as well. I think he was uh, he's proven to be one of the players of the season for the Stars so far. And look at the way um, the Stars players are celebrating and, and, and you know happy for him, and it's good. It's good to see. But the big game for the fifth of January, face-off at six fifteen. Who is here? Oh, it's Swindon. It is the A420s that uh, appear on Half Horizon, and uh, it's going to be a bit of a... It's going to be tasty, so we would, yeah, invite as many sports fans to come down. The Austin City Stars, who have qualified for the final day with a magnificent 5-1 away victory. We're going to catch up with words from the coach. And from there, join us on the 5th of January 2014, when the Austin City Stars take on the A420s. Darren, 5-1 seals your cup finals weekend space, but uh, you've got to be pleased with that performance. Yeah, you know, it's always tough coming back after a Christmas break. Uh, Bristol played just before Christmas, so obviously they were, I mean, you would have thought their feet were still in it. Um, we had a bit longer off. Uh, it's hard to get momentum back. It was good. We started off with two lines again, tried to set the tone and get the puck down deep and uh, sort of went from there and it seemed to work. Yeah, you know, Bristol turned you over 6-2 earlier on in the season. Uh, a lot of chances went begging that night good defensive work a lot of net moving I think at the time but uh, today every chance it was afforded to the Stars they put away nicely yeah we didn't try we didn't let that eat us eat away at us uh, we said before we went out there that obviously what's happened before it happened and it's a uh, 60 minutes a fresh 60 minutes for us to go out there and do what we want to do um, we set the tone I think and held it that way for 60 minutes and we got we took our chances like you say uh, peppered the goalie got lots of pucks to net and got a lot of bodies in front which we've tried to work on in training which has obviously helped um, and yeah it seems to have paid off they've only lost twice all season in cup competitions and indeed in the league you know so that was quite a yardstick and quite a bar that you've set your side for the rest of the season yeah yeah it's like I say it's good to come back after Christmas get a good cup win on there obviously turn them over after last game um, and everyone's pumped and we're ready to rock and roll for the new year and go from there but you know you talk about every goal there from Cox's snapshot from your dancing round uh, from Greener picking up a nice defensive error and tucking away Josh Oliver's quick hands every goal was a well quality. even Jacob Smith's a well worked goal yeah it's good like I think we play good hockey we like to play with the puck and I think that's where our loss, a couple of our losses that come earlier on in the year that's we kind of got a little bit lax and we tend to think that we, we can have the puck all the time and it doesn't always work like that so like I say we worked on a lot of different stuff like trying to get gritty and get a bit more physical and it's worked for us but still when we have the puck we, we create good chances and good things come off of that and it's nice to see people scoring off every line I've got to ask you one serious but sounds flippant question. I was amazed to see a green shirt playing a predominantly green shirt today. It must have been very difficult for officials. Surely, was there any questions raised on the, the colour clash? Um, to be honest, we didn't really um, didn't really think about it. Uh, we were obviously the away team and they had their uh, new Christmas shirt. So whether it was an error from their point or our... Well, usually the home team changed, but they're wearing it for sort of charity and stuff, so they probably didn't look at it twice or think about it. And maybe we should have, but hey-ho. 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 5-1 <laughs> or ho-ho. By the way, festive 15 spirit. hours beat. That's it. That's, That's it. 15 hours well and truly, but congratulations. Thank you very much.